I love my job, but sometimes it is quite different than I thought it would be. This channel is about programming and software development. If you like to get new knowledge every Monday, subscribe now and hit the notification bell. When I made the decision to go into software development, I was thinking about how cool it is to program all day and figure stuff out. I would sit there in front of my computer and work on my little program. But I was wrong. You gotta talk a lot. If you are going into software development because you don't like to talk with people, you will Will be heavily disappointed. Getting all team members on board is not easy and it requires something called meetings. Meetings are every programmer's worst enemy. Badly planned meetings are the number one money waster in business. You will have to protect your precious coding time from meetings filling up your calendar. And then there is slack and telephone calls and people coming in. Hey, hi, um, you got a minute? I'm recording right now. I know, I know, but it's, it's just one sec, okay? Sorry, sorry. Excuse me, please. Do you see what I mean? Sometimes it feels like programming is just something I do as a side job and meetings are my real job. You will code way less than you think. Most of the time, easily 50% of my work week is spent in other activities than actually coding. Other than meetings, you will do code reviews. You will learn new things and you have to do estimates. How long will this take? You will get this question a lot. And estimating a software project is not easy. There are counters of theories and methodologies created just for this. Sure, you have created something similar and having a feeling how long it took you last time and adapting from this, you will end up with an okay estimate. Maybe. When you are a carpenter who sells handmade chairs, you have a selection of chair designs and a customer pays you for your craft and hard work to recreate this chair that the customer chose. Maybe with some adaptions here and there, but basically you're just recreating the same chair. But as a software engineer, you hopefully write the software once and it gets sold to multiple customers. And if everything works as planned, you are not needed for this process anymore. My point the point here is, when you are estimating something, it is mostly something that you have never done like this before. And that's the beauty of the job. You get to explore and learn new things on a daily basis. But estimated something that you've never done before is guessing. Educated guessing, but still guessing. With Agile development, we try to circumvent this problem altogether. We don't estimate how long a task will take exactly, but rather estimate the complexity of a task in relation to another task. And then we plan two-week sprints by looking what we have accomplished in the former two-week sprints. In my opinion, agile development is only really working when you're working on your company's own product. As soon as a client is paying for the product, the question how long will it take and what will it cost will come up. And the answer, we don't don't know but you will have something runnable every other week is mostly not enough. But I'm not an expert on how to make agile development work with clients, I'm just sharing my experience here. But I digress. My point here is that estimations are not easy and they take the time that you rather spend coding but you will have to make them often because other people on your team rely on your professional opinion to make the right business decisions. But while you are talking about your estimates and the technical implications, you will realize that nobody understands you other than your fellow developers. Like in every highly specialized field, you and your colleagues will speak a completely different language than the rest of the company. And that is again why communication skills are so important. You will have to bridge the knowledge gaps when you are talking to non-programmers. It is your responsibility to convince them that your decision is a good and a valid one. You are providing vital information to the rest of the team, the company and the client to help them with their work. That is actually a part of your job, which has again nothing to do with writing some code. Talking about a highly specialized group of people. In this group, a lot of people get their identity from being a programmer and ego is a thing. Everybody is proud of their code. 
And taking ownership of your work is a good thing. It actually improves your motivation and quality of output. But too much ownership leads to overprotecting one's work. If your self-worth is coupled to your code, it is time to step back a little and take a deep breath. I have been there. And if you are already working in software, I'm sure you have as well. After working on a feature for days, getting a negative comment on a pull request feels like a hit in the stomach. That is not good. Too much ego hinders you from learning and from becoming a better developer. And it also can lead to knowledge hoarding. In order to inflate your self-worth even more, you will create code that nobody else can change, either by writing code that is so obscure or by taking every piece of work that has to do with this feature of the project. Even if it means that you have to stay longer just to fix this little bug in your baby project. You will be the guy that does that one thing. You will be important and you will be a liability to the company that you work in. Your bus factor is over the top, which means your company is in big trouble when you're getting hit by a bus. You can't go on vacations anymore, at least not when you're not connected to your baby project or the company. Guess what? That's a terrible idea. It won't make you any less replaceable or more important. It will just keep you stuck and prevent you from growing in your craft and your career. A lot of companies prevent knowledge hoarding for good reasons. A book I highly recommend when it comes to get a grip on your ego is The Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday. A link is in the description below. This link is an affiliate link. And if you choose to buy a copy of this book through my link, you are supporting my channel and my work. Thank you very much. And the last thing I wish I knew before becoming a software engineer. Everybody needs computer support and has a $1 million app idea. Hey, my, my printer is not working. There's this error message popping up. What does it say? I don't know. I always click OK on these. Do you think I need new ink? Maybe, but without knowing the actual error, I, I can just guess. I thought you are the expert. Didn't you go to school for this? Hey man, I have this idea for an app, it's amazing. It's an app with videos in it on, on how to get, get fit and shred it. All right, that sounds, sounds good. So I will build the app and you produce, produce the videos, right? You know what, I'm, I'm really busy right now, to be honest. Um, maybe you could come up with something like, like an AI or, or a blockchain. So, so the AI produces the videos and what exactly do you want with the blockchain? I have no idea, that's why I'm talking to you right now, idiot. But actually we need something like Instagram in there as well. You want me to re program Instagram. You know that this is a quite big project and you want me to do it all alone? I don't get it. Just copy from Instagram. How hard can that be? And don't forget that I had the idea, right? If you are already a software engineer, what are the things that you wish you knew before you came into the industry? Let me know in the comments below. And if you have any other question that you want to get answered on this channel, drop it there as well. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, please subscribe and hit the notification bell. Why don't you check out one of my other videos? I will see you in the next one. Yeah, 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 yeah.